Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome to phase one of the season 10 PTS. This has just gone live on the Twitter account and season 10 PTS is going live this Friday. So let's check out what these patch notes are all about. I've got no idea what's included in here. I don't know if this is going to be a long video, it's going to be a short video, but we'll just have to wait and see. Let's get straight into this one. So patch notes, please note that the new features mentioned below are still being worked on and are therefore not in their final stages. Final 3D models for some of the new gear and weaponry items are still pending. Placeholder assets are used instead. So preload is available on Thursday, uh, August 18th at 6 p.m. CEST. And then it goes live Friday 19th of August. Exact timings are to follow. The patch size, size without PTS build on Connect is 85 gigabytes. Size if the PTS build already, already is on Connect. And that's 6.07 gigabytes. So I, I think that basically means if you've been part of the PTS before and you've already got it downloaded, then you're going to only have a 6 gigabyte download. But if you've never done it, you're looking at 85 gigabytes, which is considerable. Countdown, new difficulties. Uh, oh, and by the way, the PTS, I assume, is going to be PC only. Countdown, new difficulties. We've got the normal, can be completed solo, hard, designed for, uh, for groups of eight casual players. Challenging, current difficulty available at release, designed for a group of eight matchmade players, can be completed by a team of two to four hardcore players. And then heroic, best for four to eight hardcore players. New countermeasures. Skill suppression. Once the enemy is dead, an EMP will be deployed. Uh, disruption effect, that can affect agents and their skills in 15 meters radius. Uh, de uh, deactivation benefit, enemies no longer deploy an EMP after they die. Players reduced uh, a 20 plus 25% preliminary skill cooldown if they're killing an enemy within 15 meters radius. So that's going to be quite a big one if you've got skills, which are already not that great within Countdown as it stands. Explosive resistance, enemies gain 100% explosive resistance. Deactivation benefit, enemies no longer have extra explosive resistance. Agents gain plus 25% explosive damage. Reload speed, agents total uh, speed weapon reload decreased to 75%. Deactivation benefit, agents no longer have total speed weapon reload decreased to 75%. Agents gain plus 25% speed weapon reload. So that's going to be good for overall DPS. Armor protection, enemies receive plus 25% of incoming armor repairs. And then the deactivation benefit, agents gain plus 25% for incoming armor repairs. Hostile skill damage resistance. Enemies gain 50% skill damage resistance and then deactivation benefit. Enemies skills damage resistance is reduced by 25%. So that's actually a good thing because that makes um, skills more viable. There's quite a lot more actually here. Um, agents hazard resistance. Agents hazard resistance is reduced by 25%. And then the deactivation benefit. Enemies hazard resistance is reduced by 25%. Headshot resistance. Uh, enemies headshot resistance is increased by 25% uh, and then uh, the deactivation benefit is a agents gain plus 25% headshot damage and then critical resistance enemies uh, reduce incoming critical chance by 25% the deactivation benefit agents gain plus 25% critical chance. So if, if, if you're going into countdown with this one at the end, if you're going into countdown with, you know, 50% crit chance and 130, 140% crit damage, all you've got to do is get rid of it, get, uh, make sure this is uh, on there. And then if you deactivate that, then you're getting yourself that extra, you can just take off those extra mods or whatever it might be that's giving you that extra 25% uh, crit chance. Take that off, put it into crit damage, and you're going to have insane amount of damage coming in the countdown so this is cool i mean yeah they're not the most crazy ideas or, or, or anything like that but uh it's nice to have some more countermeasures in the game you know just any more kind of depth in that mode is good other changes new gear uh all says other changes to prevent the players from being kicked out of the group by the group leader before and during the extraction the feature is now disabled cool uh new gear we got the arquebus brazos which is a uh, gear brand set one piece equipped gives 10 percent skill haste Two pieces equipped gives one tech level. I'm not sure what that is. Three pieces equipped give 20% ammo capacity. And then we got the Umbra Initiative gear set. Two pieces equipped gives 15% critical chance. Three pieces gives plus 30% reload speed. And then four pieces equipped gives access to two unique talents based on player positioning from the shadows and into the night. So from the shadows is while in cover, gain 10 stacks per second up to 50. Each stack will give 1% crit damage uh, 
increase and 0.5% RPM buff does not apply while shooting from cover. Oh, so, so, sorry, it says 0.5% RPM buff does not apply while shooting from cover. While out of cover, you lose four stacks per second at normal speed and two stacks per second if running. So this is kind of getting cover, wait there a little bit, get that kind of buff up, leave cover, and then you'll be able to do the damage. And then it says into the light, while out of cover and in combat, gain 10 stacks per second up to 50. Each stack will give 0.5% armor regen when it's consumed. Stacks consume 10 stacks per second only in cover. So this is kind of in, in cover and out of cover, which is why it's from the shadows and into the light. This sounds like this could be really good with uh, LMGs. That reload speed, that crit chance, that RPM buff as well is going to be really, really strong. Or anything that's kind of like an AK with, with low um, low RPM could work really well with that. So this, um, yeah, this sounds pretty cool. The chest and backpack bonuses. The chest increases stacks from 50 to 100 and gain 20 stacks per second uh, for the From Shadows talent. The backpack increases stack from 50 to 100, gain 20 stacks per second uh, from the Interlight talent, consumes 20 stacks per second while in cover. So interesting gear sets. We'll have to see how these play out. These sounds, uh, this Umbra initiative does sound pretty strong. Um, we haven't actually got any more details. Um, okay, the, okay. so the, the gear brand set as well. I'm not sure what this tech level is all about. So maybe that's somewhat new. I don't, I don't, or unless that's been not been put properly. I'm not sure. Uh, new talents, uh, new weapons and talents. Exotic weapons. We got the Doctor Home, exotic variation of the M1A QCB rifle. The the Doctor Home talent is shooting an enemy with Doctor Home applies a mark. When killed, mark target drops a 15% armor repair kit. The kit doesn't give bonus armor. Only the weapon owner can see the armor repair kit. Once a player picks the armor kit, all party members receive the uh, receive the heal. That's in that's an interesting mechanic. That's not a mechanic we have in the game, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we've then got Bloody Knuckles, which are exotic gloves. Uh, talent over the top, throwing a grenade or striking an enemy with a melee, a melee attack activates the Seeing Red buff. Seeing Red grabs 25% weapon damage and 100% melee damage. Seeing Red lasts 20 seconds and has a 60 second cooldown. While in cooldown, striking an enemy with a melee attack or hitting an enemy with the effect of a grenade will complete the cooldown instantly. So that's an interesting one. I'm um, not overly keen on that one, if I'm being honest with you. We then got Busy Little B, exotic pistol inspired by lightning rod. We got the Busy uh, Little B talent. Each shot to a different target increases weapon damage if players shooting at different targets. Each shot increases 10% to a maximum of 200%. Players have five seconds to shoot between each target until they lose the stacks and must do it again. When the time is over, or the player shoots the same target, they will gain an extra 5% damage for each stack they are able to get on the next shot. The stacks will remain even if the user changes weapons. So that could be interesting. We'll have to see how that works out. But for me personally, I really like this mechanic with this Doctor Home. It's just a shame that it's on the uh, uh, QCB rifle, which to me isn't one of the weapons I would consider people use much. Named weapons, we've got the Lefty, which is an ACS-12 shotgun, perfect sledgehammer, Dealing damage with a grenade applies a mark on a target. Targets uh, with marks take 40% more damage to armor and minus 10% movement speed. So we've got a few things here that are um, talking about using grenades. I can see they're trying to make grenades more viable uh, and more uh, within this patch, which is a good thing because to me they're pretty worthless. Um, we've got stage left, which is in SOCOM M1A uh, with perfect sledgehammer as well. Dealing damage, and it's this. I don't know if it's actually got the same talent or if that's a placeholder for now I'll have to wait and see um, so uh, sledgehammer is dealing damage with a grenade applies a mark on a target they get 30% more damage to armor and minus 5% movement speed marks disappear after 10 seconds and then we've got the perfect sledgehammer there new strongholds uh, tidal basin added legendary difficulty in Manning National Zoo added legendary difficulty quality of life changes added uh, for the UI added server time in the main menu I did a quantity preview for material caches that allows us to see what's inside before opening it. Remove, that's good. Removed an int, uh, in, interval of randomization for materials uh, caches to allow the maximum of each material to be obtained when opening the caches. Again, that's good. Adding an option to hide loot beams in the gameplay setting. Why would you not want those? Move materials for Yuzuna and Heartbreaker gear sets to the correct ca uh, category. Added two Season 9 Exotics, Dreaded Decked and Blue Screen to Haven and Base Operation Display Walls. To Haven and Base Operation Display Wars. Okay. 
added an option to sell from stash at each vendor players can sell stuff. Uh, exotics can drop in the open world with random NPCs and any activities. Please note that the drop chance percentage for PTS has been set up to match higher than the actual value. Okay, cool, that's really good. And then character uh, added, uh, character customization allowing players to change body type, skin tone, and face shape. Material and um, resources, I'm sure that's meant to say not recourses. Cap raise for three main resources, namely food, water, and opponents up to 500 units. Cap raise for all crafting, optimization materials, and DC credits. For more information, see below. And then this is what it's all gonna go up to, basically. Uh, so, shade calibration up to 1,000. Cool. Yeah, we definitely needed that. And and that's the end, guys. Uh, that's what we have. So overall, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm really looking forward to uh, this particular gear set. I think this sounds really cool with an LMG. I haven't used an LMG in the game properly for a long time, although I've always loved using LMGs. I like the sound of how this kind of works, this Dr. Home talent. I like how it works and the interaction. It's not something that I think we've seen in the game before. Not overly keen on the fact that grenades are, be, uh, are kind of looking like they're going to be some of that's a priority in this uh, update. Although they do need some love, so actually it's probably a good thing that they're more focused on. And you can never have too many countermeasures. The new difficulties in Countdown look to be uh, like they're going to be a lot of fun. So it'll be good to see how that uh, works itself out. And overall, I'm just happy to see some more stuff come into the game. Um, I know Legendary Difficulty and Tidal uh, Basin and Manning uh, National Zoo will be some of that a lot of hardcore players who do Legendary Difficulty are going to be looking forward to. And overall, the UI changes look good as well. So let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Um, I suspect there may be more coming, but we'll have to wait and see. As I said, this will be going live on Friday as part of the PTS. It will be on PC only. And if I get a chance, then I will play through it, of course, and I'll be putting out some content for you guys. So, um, yeah. Thanks very much for watching, and until the next one, epic out.